The second pandemic of the 21st century has led to the largest quarantine in human history. Bustling cities have turned into ghost towns. Millions are under lockdown in parts of Asia and Europe. Public squares where communities have been converging for centuries are almost empty. In today's hyper-connected world, doctors and governments are urging less social contact to reduce the risk of infection. But there are concerns that social distancing, although vital in these times, can also lead to social isolation. Intent of social distancing is in fact to protect those who are the most vulnerable, in particular the elderly and those with underlying medical conditions. It's also to try to reduce the rate of the spread of the disease so that we can avoid overwhelming the healthcare system with too many ill patients at the same time. But I certainly understand that those who are already the most vulnerable already face the greatest barriers to care and may have limited social networks. And we're asking them to limit these social networks even further. In New York, volunteers of local charity groups like this one are working overtime to deliver food to the elderly and poor stuck at home. Those who aren't just vulnerable to the virus, but also hunger. It's very serious, um, especially those who have the vulnerable conditions or pre-existing conditions. They can't get out like some of us can, like you and I. So for them, they are affected because they cannot eat and also they're isolated. The World Health Organization says now more than ever, communities must come together and stand with those neglected by society. When we speak about that vulnerability, we cannot forget migrants. We cannot forget undocumented workers. We cannot forget prisoners in prisons. They may be serving sentence, but they deserve no less protection under the law than others. So when we talk about stigma, we also need to, to really look carefully at exclusion. So Voices of hope. <laughs> Chants of solidarity. Spontaneous and resilient also show how in these trying times, people are finding new ways to break the barriers of isolation and loneliness. Priyanka Gupta, Al Jazeera. Well, let's take a look at some other news now. Iraq's president has condemned airstrikes by the U.S., which killed six people. The head of the U.S. military central command has defended the strikes, saying they targeted Iranian-backed fighters. The U.S. says the strikes were in response to a rocket attack that killed three soldiers on Wednesday. Two American and a British soldier died after nearly 20 rockets were fired at a military base northwest of Baghdad.